God was out boosting cars. <laughs> and he like high-end automobiles, so he went out into the hill country. Or down in the ghetto. You find high-end cars in the hills or in the ghetto. Now in the hill country, they park the cars in their driveway, sleep in their bedroom. In the ghetto, they park the cars on the street and sleep in the car. <laughs> High-end automobiles. This guy was boosting, so he got caught. Caught him red-handed. Locked him up. He went before the judge. Boo! He had, been, he had several other counts. Just say, well, you seem to be very remorseful. I'm just sorry, you are. Yep, you seem to show a fair amount of remorse. I'm just sorry, Your Honor. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I never should have done that. Can you be more specific? I never should have turned that car because if I had turned that car, I wouldn't have got caught. <laughs> he was sorry, but he's sorry about the wrong stuff. So God doesn't forgive you just because you feel sorry. I'm sorry, I'm pregnant. <laughs> What? Let's not talk about the pregnancy because there's no illegitimate baby. Let's talk about what the action to get pregnant. I'm sorry. God wants us to have godly sorrow because and when look, 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 if you don't have godly sorrow, you can't approach God right. God doesn't forgive you just because you pray. Suddenly things go to get bad. You go down on your knees and start praying. People who know something about God's deliverance, they're praying all the time. Yeah. See, they don't even know what they're praying. They can't in the prayers, but they're just praying. It's like preserved. Pray every day. Sometimes all night. Praying, praying, thanking God. And God keeps, keeps his angels around. And that, when, 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 uh, when Sister Lisa was giving a testimony, it was clear to me what was going on. I'd already talked to Brother Henry about it, but it was clear to me. Because with that much prayer, God is there with me. Matter of fact, God couldn't let the roof fall because he was in it. Yeah. Let the roof fall when I'm in it. Uh, uh, you got to understand that if you don't pray right, what does pray right mean? It means that man should always pray and think not. That's what it means. Pray. He forgives and he stands with you. But if you're just in the business of praying when there's a problem, before you started to pray, there was a problem, and after you pray, the problem is still there. Because you're trying to pimp God. See, you're trying to make God do something that's going to make you feel better or look better. And he doesn't respond to that. He forgives us when we confess our sins because he's faithful and just. He's faithful to his promise. Anybody get this? He's just with reference to the cross. God will not make you pay for sins that Christ has already paid for. Yes, yes. Can you hear me? Yes, Let me give you another example here. This is a Bible church. So open your Bibles to Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. You didn't bring a Bible today? Bring it when you come back. Amen? Amen. And I don't have a Bible. See me. You gotta have a Bible. You need a Bible. You cannot go around unarmed. The enemy is the enemy is a bad, bad dude. But he's not better than the one you know. Are you there yet? Chapter 8, Book of Romans. Verse 31, read. What can we say about such wonderful things as these? If God is for us, who can ever be against us? You see that? Verse 32, read. Since God did not spare even his own son but gave him up for us all, will God who gave us Christ also give us everything else? 33. Who dare accuse us whom God has chosen for his own? Will God? No. He is the one who has given us right standing with himself. 34. Who then will condemn us? Will Christ Jesus? No. For he is the one who died for us and was raised to life for us and is sitting at the place of highest honor next to God, pleading for us. Yeah. Verse 35, read. Can anything ever separate us? Can anything ever separate us? Can anything what? Yeah. Ever separate us from the love of God? 
Christ's love doesn't mean he no longer loves us if we have trouble or calamity or persecution or hunger. Wait, wait, wait. Doesn't mean, well now, there's some people who believe that if you're suffering, it's because the Lord has found fault with you. But for the Paul's here, he says, no, wait now. Does it mean that he no longer loves you when you have trouble or calamity? See, look, saints, many times you go through trials. Why? The bigger the trial, the greater the trial. Listen to this. You need to hear this. Every time you go through something, God is using that something to get those muscles toned up. Because he has some weight over here that you won't be able to pick up if you're weak. So he needs you to go in and get your pump some iron before the Lord. When you go to pump an iron, that's in prayer and through going through trial. So here I am in the midst of my trial. And I'm thanking you, Lord. Everybody else is walking around looking at me. And I'm in the midst of my trial. And I'm saying, Lord, I thank you. Lord, I bless you. Lord, I bless you. I thank you. I thank you. Somebody say, Well, what you thanking God for now? You, you suffering in hell? What you thanking him for? And you say, because of what he's getting ready to do. I know what he's getting ready to do. Somebody say, well, what, what, what do you mean you know what he's getting ready to do? I mean that he wouldn't be taking me through this exercise. He wouldn't have me on this new diet unless he wanted me to be toned up so that I'm able to run the distance. So I'm thanking him already because I know that that he's taking me through this so that I can go to something bigger. And the bigger trial that I go through, the bigger treasure I'm going to get. Can anybody hear this? So, so this, word, this word here, this word gives me a beautiful picture, saints. Can anything ever separate us from the love of God? Does it mean he no longer loves us? If we have trouble or calamity or if we are persecuted or if we are hungry or cold or in danger or threatened with death, verse 36 reads, even the scriptures say, for your sake we are killed every day. We are being slaughtered like sheep. 37. No, despite all these things, overwhelming victory is ours through Christ who loves us. Some translations say we're more than conquerors. Verse 38 read, and I am convinced that nothing can ever separate us from his love. Death can, and life can, the angels can, and demons can, our fears for today, our worries about tomorrow, and even the powers of hell can't keep God's love away. Come on, let, let, let's, get, let's make 39 big. You ready? 39. Whether we are high above the sky or in the deepest ocean, nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus. Oh Lord, I'm trying to tell you something. You ought to give the Lord some praise. You need to know nothing. 